It's totally fine. I have a lot more stories. That you do. Yeah. <laughs> that you do. Guilty as charged <laughs> with the stories. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome once again to I've Got Something to Say. Thank you so much for tuning into my podcast. I'm so glad you're here to listen to a story. And today's story is called, Yes Sir, That's My Baby. June 19th, 2000 was a big day for me. That's the day I became a dad. Since then, um, I've become a dad a second time and I've become a stepdad to three other girls. So I have a total of two daughters, three stepdaughters. It's a lot of girls in my life. And it all started back on that day in June on the 19th, the year 2000. I'd gone over to China and that was the day after several days touring around and going to see things like the Great Wall and the Forbidden City and spending some time in Kunming, which is the city where we actually got our daughter Molly, um, got to go see her. And the way this process works is they send you a picture of the baby that's been assigned to you. And they have this matching room, or that's this is how they describe it, where they take a look at a parent's dossier, potential parents, and then they match them up with a baby that they think will be good for them. I don't know how you determine what baby is going to be good for what parents, but they say that they put a lot of thought and effort into evaluating. I don't know if it's true, but net net, they evaluated however they evaluate and determined that this particular baby, Shi Yuan Li, would be good for us. So they sent us a couple of pictures of her birthday information, and there's really not much more information than that. So you're holding on to this picture of this baby, and just all of your hopes and dreams are wrapped up in this this sweet little baby face that you're going to get to meet in a matter of months. So that happened with us. We traveled to China, and I remember specifically when we got there, we were supposed to get our babies on one particular day, and then they came to us. It was us and three other families said, hey, it's going to be a couple of days later when you actually get your baby. Sorry about that. There's just been a little mix up. So we wait a couple of extra days. We go do sightseeing, have a lot of fun, enjoy some of the food, whatevs. But the night before we were to get Molly, um, I was up in the room and I had the pictures that they sent to us originally. And then they sent us some or actually handed us some pictures when we were there And they told us it was going to be a couple of days later before we could get our kids. So I laid all these pictures out on a table in the hotel room. And I took a video showing the pictures of her when she was a little bitty baby and then the pictures of her now. And I did a little commentary while I was taking the video, which, oh, how I wish I would not have done little commentaries on all of those videos. Going back and listening is just so very, very painful When I think I'm being clever and inevitably I am not, but I was talking about how much she had grown and changed from the little baby picture that we got of her maybe at, you know, a month, six weeks, uh, eight weeks old to now eight months old in these more current pictures that we had. And I just was amazed at how much she had grown in just a few months. But babies do that. So that's what happens. The next day we go and we get our little Molly and. She was the most beautiful little baby I had ever seen in my life, which I think that's what parents feel when they see their babies. Um, She was something else. A little spitfire, little, little bitty thing. And most of the time she would just be quiet and stare at us. But when nighttime would come, until she got used to us and we really bonded, she would just scream at the top of her lungs. And I couldn't believe how much noise and ruckus was coming from this little, tiny, sweet little baby. So we come home. We get used to being a family and having this little baby. And she went from being developmentally a little bit behind, primarily because she had just spent time in a crib instead of being you know, cared for and being held and things like that. But she quickly got up to speed and was just doing great. And to this day, she's just always seems to be ahead of the curve. The kid's something else. 
But I got involved somehow, and I don't remember how, with this uh, woman named Hani Lee, who was in San Francisco. And she had a connection somehow to the orphanage that we got Molly from. And so I was part of this Yahoo group of people that had adopted from the Kunming orphanage. And she had had put out a message to everyone and said, hey, I'm going back to the orphanage. Send me copies, if you would like, of referral pics, pics that you took when they were babies and you first got them, and then pics that you have now. She goes, they give me access to pictures that they hold back and don't send to families, and I can find pictures of your baby and send them to you. Like, well, that's cool. So got all the logistical information, made copies of the pictures. We sent them off to her. And then she took off for China. Well, several weeks later, got an interesting email. Started out, dear Chris, I'm not sure exactly how to tell you this. But when I went back and compared the current pictures of Molly with the referral picture you have of Molly, I found something out. The baby in the referral picture is not the baby that you took home, and that's not Molly. And so she found the little bitty baby pictures of Molly that would have been the referral pictures that were sent to us. And when you looked at those, compared to the pictures that they gave us when we were over there, compared to the pictures that we had when she was older, there was no doubt that that little baby that Hani Lee found out about was actually Molly, not the baby whose referral picture was sent to us. And I asked her why, and she said they really, they didn't have a reason listed. And they, she said that happens a lot. Maybe babies get sick and die. Um, But if they go by the letter of the law, then they have to start the process all over again for the family who's been slated to have that particular baby. So because we had been referred one baby Assuming it died or something happened to it, we would have had to gone back to the beginning of the process, which is 18 months long, and go all the way through and get back in line. So what they do is just do the old switcherooski and give you a different baby. And so that's what happened with us. And I had really made a point of telling Molly, since she was a little bitty baby, the story of how we came to get her. Because I had a friend have a friend who was adopted when he was a kid. And he says he never remembers not knowing that he was adopted. And he felt like that helped him adapt and deal with being an adopted kid because he knew other kids that had been adopted that didn't find out till eight, nine, 10 years old. And it was a lot for them to process and deal with. So I had been honest with Molly from the very beginning about who she was and where she came from. Well, now here's a new wrinkle when you've got like a four or five year old kid. And I thought, do we tell her? Do we not? Like, no, she needs to know. Uh, My daughters don't know much about where they came from. They don't know about birth parents. They don't um, know about any, you know, family medical history. So I feel like I wanted to give them everything, you know, I possibly can for them to know about themselves, who they really are, where they came from. So um talked with Molly, showed her the pictures and explained to her what had happened. And she took it like a champ. Um, the babies were just a couple of months apart in age. So, you know, there's a chance that Molly's actual birthday's in December instead of October. But, um, you know, we decided not to, to change anything for her because that had been her life up to that point. Um, it's interesting, too, because... I don't, you know, it could all be coincidence or chance. Um, I'm, I'm sad for the baby that died, but I just feel so blessed that for whatever reason, God, universe, fate, whatever you want to call it, um, made the path happen so that Molly could become my baby and give me the gift of becoming a father. And it's a gift that I will cherish for the rest of my life. And so glad that, uh, we got Molly Sue Lee Whiting, and she made me a papa. So, there you go. That does it for this edition of I've Got Something to Say. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in and listening. Um, sometimes these are cheesy, sometimes they're poignant, and sometimes, I don't know, you got to think about it a while and decide for yourself. Um, 
Please tune in next time. Also, big thanks to KCTK Radio and my good buddy Paul. We would not have this podcast without him. Thank you, sir, and I'll talk to you next time.